For today's film, in Spain, we're looking at a very attractive, very shallow little lagoon to which all sorts of waders were coming down to. And as we drove up to it, I thought, this looks absolutely fantastic. And we put up some Butio pop-up hides. They weren't the lie-down type, but you can always lie down in a normal hide and get those low-level shots. The hides are all close together at El Torre. There's never too far to go. It's perhaps a five minute drive to the furthest hide. But it's always early in the morning to make use of that best light. When we first pulled up at this wonderful photogenic lagoon, I thought it was absolutely wonderful. I saw it in the daylight first, but the session where we're going to photograph in the early morning, it's just beautiful. We're using the Butio hides that I use myself at home too. I think they're wonderful hides. And they're not lie down hides, they're normal height hides, but I chose to lie down on the floor. So my tripod, I can remove the center column so it goes down low. And I can typically lie there for about two hours before my back and my neck is really hurting. And I've broken the number one rule of lying down on the floor to photograph wildlife. Empty your bladder before you get in the hide. And I didn't. We were soon joined by a wide variety of waders and the hides have been left up there permanently so they're well used to them. This is a black-tailed godwit. And this is not slow motion, but I have slowed it down a touch. I always think if you show birds at the normal speed, they're too jerky. And I also made a lot of use of pro capture here. So as the bird launched into flight, I've already taken the picture before it launches. Pro capture is a wonderful feature. Now I remember the first time I ever saw a collared pratigal. It was in Spain in the 1990s and it was in flight. And I'm looking at it and thinking, what on earth is that bird? Is it a tern? Is it a swallow? Is it a wader, a kestrel? I couldn't make up my mind. When it landed, I thought, wow, what a stunning bird. Then I knew exactly what it was, but in flight it was very confusing if you've never seen one before. But they are beautiful birds. Again, just slightly slowed down, not too much. And this is an immature bird. I'd never seen one of these before. And if it hadn't have been with the adults, I might have hesitated for a few seconds as to what it was. So here's a sequence taken with the Pro Capture. I've got it set up at this point to take 40 pictures prior to me fully depressing the button. So as soon as I press the button, the 40 pictures beforehand are now written to the memory card and then it starts taking pictures after I press the button as well. So I came back from Spain with 38,000 pictures, which has got to be a record for a week's photography, but it's mostly because of this 50 frames per second you get with the OM-1 and then the fact I used Pro Capture so often. So here's a juvenile bathing and when it's finished, like all waders, it's going to leap up in the air and dry its wings. And the Pro Capture just makes this so easy. But the wind has to be blowing from the right direction, unfortunately it was, the wind's blowing from the hide towards the bird, because they're always going to leap up facing into the wind. Shutter speed, probably about four thousandths of a second here, because it's a very bright day. I really enjoy using Pro Capture. I think it's a fantastic feature on a camera. I see that Canon have now got it, Nikon have got it. There's really only Sony that haven't, and I'm sure they're gonna catch up soon. Several black wing stilts were around. And the Northern Lapwing. Same Lapwing as we get in the UK. Again, leaping up into the air. And the Kentish plover. 
This is the commonest of the plovers you get in Spain. You see them almost everywhere. And bathing, so you can predict, it's going to jump up in the air when it's finished. Almost all waders do this. The only exception I can really think of is the green sandpiper. When that jumps up it goes sideways more than upwards. But most waders do go up in the air just to dry themselves out. After two hours of lying on my stomach I got up onto the stool and I used the rear monitor to try and follow the birds. It's not quite as easy to do but it is a lot more comfortable. And then eventually somebody comes to rescue you and take you back for lunch. So it's Spanish siesta time now. It's too hot to photograph, the sun is too high in the sky. So you're typically going out at 5, 5.30 in the morning and then you pack up about 10 o'clock in the morning and then photography doesn't start again until 5.30, 6 o'clock in the evening, something like that. But you're getting the best light and you just sit out the midday heat. These days, travelling where you don't speak the language is getting easier and easier because we've got Google Translate on your mobile phone, it's just so easy to communicate. Just show you what I used to use before the days of the internet. A little traveller's wordless guide, the, the, wordless, the wordless travel book, that's what it's called. I've carried that with me for decades now. It's in remarkably good condition for me as well, but it just happens to be passport sized so it fits in the same pocket as to where I keep my passport which is always in a very secure place and in that little booklet it's very thin very lightweight you've got pictures of just about everything you could ever need including going to restaurants and ordering food you can point at fish or chicken or, or beef or whatever it was you want to order eggs and chips that has made life a lot easier over the years when I've been traveling so back out for the evening session, another short drive across the estate takes us to a tower hide where there's a variety of nest boxes set up in front of the hide and rollers are nesting here. So we've just started the evening session, it's now just past 6 o'clock when we've got in and it's very hot, still very hot. The sun is just starting to get a bit lower and more attractive. There's a fan in the hide which runs off a little battery and keeps it a bit cooler but it's still very very hot, drinking lots of water. The European roller is a very colourful bird and it's not one that you often get to photograph from a car window for instance using the car as a mobile hide. They don't tend to be that approachable. You really need to be in a proper hide to get pictures of these. What I really liked about this site was how colourful the background was. It's a field of wheat or barley where the crop has already been pulled in so it's just stubble but it looks lovely, very very colourful backdrop and nice and smooth and out of focus. The birds are coming in with a wide variety of insects, some very colourful ones, some very large ones too. The best opportunity for flight pictures was after they'd fed the young. So they fly up to the nest box and then usually they flew off to the right hand side. I wasn't using Pro Capture, I was just following them and shooting at 50 frames per second. But it's once they're clear of the nest boxes and they're out in the open, you stand a chance of getting some flight shots. The shutter speed was 5 thousandths of a second with the lens wide open at 1600 ISO. Thanks for watching.
Now if you're interested in going on a trip to El Torre, there's more than one way to do it. There are British tour companies you can join that will go out there, but you can also book it direct. And I'll put the website for El Torre in the description underneath the video. You can contact them, they've got very good English by email, you'll have no problems booking it up. They can book the accommodation, airport uh, transit as well from the airport to the, the side. But there's a third way, which is probably the best way. I'll put the website in for René de Heer, who is a Dutch gentleman who lives in the UK and he organises trips to El Torre, but you don't pay him. You're only paying direct to El Torre at their normal prices. René just likes the company, he just likes people to go with and he goes there more than once a year and it's well worth joining up with him. He actually organised this trip for the six of us that went, but unfortunately he had to drop out at the last moment, but that is probably the best way to go.